Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, let's move into something a little bit different here. <clears throat> we've talked about, most of the structures we've talked about to this point are all tissue-based, right? We've talked about the eye, the parts of the eye, internally, externally, we've talked about the lids, the lashes, talked about the... Uh, the lacrimal apparatus talked about the tears. The tears aren't tissue-based, but you know they're all coming from these different tissue-based structures. I want to talk about the bony orbit. This is something that doesn't get talked about a lot in a lot of courses. Um, and you know what? To be honest, I'm not going to go into super detail with this because it's not super pertinent to all the things we do as opticians. However, I don't think we should leave any stone unturned when it comes to understanding the different parts of the eye. And well, the socket in which the eye and the accessory structures sit um, is kind of important. So we're going to go over it. There's a lot of bones here to know um, or to not necessarily know how to put it. I don't think you should have to memorize all this stuff. But if you like it and you find it cool, it is a neat thing to understand because really uh, intricate and interesting way that the eye socket or the bony orbit is structured and made. So anyways, we're going on and on. Grab your notebook, or I mean your workbook, and let's jump into it. Let's take a look at the bony orbit. So here's a picture of the skull with all these lines coming from it, because we're going to label a few of these things. And I don't want you to stress out, because, you know, sometimes when we go through some of these things, there's a lot of, <clears throat> like, Latin terms, a lot of weird names. And I don't expect you to remember all these things, but I just want you to understand the general structure of the bony orbit and understand that it's multiple bones fitting together and that uh, they all kind of play their own little part. And it's kind of a cool like mosaic that's built together. And if you don't remember any of these names and things like that, I don't think it's going to be a disservice to you as good of an optician as you're going to be. Um, however, yeah, you never know. It might serve you well in the future. So I, I like stuff like this. So and I think it's important. So uh, the orbit is the opening slash socket where the eye and its appendages are located. All right. Well, pretty simple. Sits in the skull. Uh, there are seven bones which collectively phone, form the bo bony orbit. All right. So it's not just one molded surface. Like most things in our body, it's all bone, you know, our leg bones, there's many, many bones that all kind of fit in together. Uh, the bones of the skull are like that too, you know, they're not just one bone. And if you see like in Halloween, right, you see skulls, a lot of the time <clears throat> the um, eye socket is hollow because these bones are not just one big solid piece that are connected to the rest of the skull. They're all kind of little bones that all kind of mesh together, right? So the uh, bones are, all right, so let's go through them. Again, don't expect to, to remember all these. Uh, the frontal bone, the sphenoid bone, the zygomatic bone, uh, the ethmoid bone, the lacrimal bone, which is kind of cool, right? Because that's where we talk about the lacrimal gland. Uh, that's where all the lacrimal, a lot of the parts of the lacrimal apparatus actually sit on. Uh, the palatine bone and the maxilla at the very bottom. Okay. Again, don't, I don't expect you to remember all these, but you know, it's kind of cool to know there's seven bones. And if you hear these bones, because sometimes, oh, I'll talk about it a little bit, sometimes injuries, you can hear about certain bones and you'll be in the loop because you'll say, ah, I've heard of this before. Um, more importantly than which all these different bones are the contents of the bony orbit. This is something I want you to remember. And I being your teacher, when I tell you this is something I want you to remember, I, I, you know, you would probably remember in high school, you'd say, ah, he'll probably test me on this. I don't, I'll tell you right now, or, you know, disclaimer, I'm not going to test you on the names of the different bones, but I might test you on the contents of the bony orbit, hint, hint. Uh, so why don't we look at them? So first, the eyelids. The eyelids fit neatly inside the socket, right? The extraocular muscles, which we haven't talked about yet, but we're going to very soon. They move the eye around, right? Uh, the cranial nerves, which are, you know, the... the 
the optic nerve and other nerves are, are in there, blood vessels, the blood supply, fat, and the lacrimal apparatus, which we just talked about. So important to realize that all this stuff gets smushed into this tiny little hole or opening, right? Um, things that I haven't mentioned here, there's little holes everywhere, right? So the, the, the bones are structured in a way that allow uh, little channels for all these things to kind of fit through, like the nerves, the blood vessels, um, and the, the other kind of you know, structures like lacrimal apparatus. We call those foramina. Um, little holes, that's a Latin term for little holes in these structures. Not terribly important, just kind of one of those little did you knows. Um, but it's very important to realize that the eyelids, the extraocular muscles, the nerves, the vessels, the apparatus, everything's in there. Fat, why do you think fat's in there? For cushioning, right? So you want you want to make sure that everything's in there. This is you know, the eyeballs are extremely important organs. You want to make sure they're protected, so there's a nice layer of fat in there that cushions everything and keeps everything together. So this is pretty much all you really need to know about the bony orbit, and it's actually probably more than most opticians do think of or know about it. Um, so you're already kind of ahead of the curve in that sense. But uh, why don't we look at why we need to know this? Uh, well, first, the you know primary function is obvious. Um, you know it's bones, and usually bones protect, so it's protecting the eye and the agnexa, right? Uh, another reason that you need to know this um, is just so that you're kind of understanding where certain ailments are coming from. <clears throat> A common ailment here is when the excess tissue accumulates uh, behind the globe. Um, and from the enlargement of the lacrimal gland or abnormal inflammation for whatever cause. And it can cause a condition called proptosis. And that's the axial protrusion of the eye. Okay, and um, it's, this might seem kind of out there, but like why all of a sudden is he mentioning this? Proptosis is a, is a common one. Well, you know, not like every day, but it's something that is, is seen, you know, most opticians will encounter this at least once uh, in their career, probably more than once. But you know, certain conditions like Graves' disease are are known for this. It's a thyroid, you know, a thyroid condition that can actually um, cause the eyes to bulge out, it makes the eyes look really big, and looks like they're popping out of the eye sockets, almost like Bugs Bunny style. Um, and it's important to understand that this is a tissue disease or tissue condition and the reason is that we you know it's very much linked to what we just talked about how you have a very nice nice tight neatly kind of organized socket and with you know fat tissue all these things neatly packed in it if things start to swell or grow abnormally large another reason is if you have a really enlarged uh, lacrimal gland it starts to push and where are things going to go you know the the back wall it's like a little cave the back walls of the bony orbit are all sealed up so it has nowhere to go but outwards, right? So um, for that reason, you know, it's not uncommon for the lacrimal gland uh, to, in some patients to become swollen. Graves' disease is a pretty prominent disease. Um, things like this, seeing proptosis, uh, you will see it. So uh, understanding where this has come from is actually very useful for you as an optician so that you can, again, be in the loop and understand. Again, this, these are things that you don't want to be giving medical advice and stuff like that, but it's something you could definitely discuss with patients if they're the ones who've said, you know, yes, I have proptosis because of Graves' disease. You could say, ah, yes, I understand, and you can kind of have discussions about it. And you even learn stuff from the patient when you ask more questions. Uh, that's another thing that I haven't mentioned yet. I really encourage you that when you encounter patients, of course, you have to have some tact. And you have to make sure that you're being respectful and that they want to discuss these things. But you'll find that a lot of patients with certain ailments do want to talk about them, especially to professionals. Um, you do learn a lot of things from these people because they inherently become experts of their own disease because they're being treated for it and they have to do their own research and uh, hey, it could be really, really beneficial to you. So that's, uh, that really does it for the bony orbit. I didn't really expect to go this long on this one because uh, it's really not something I want you to, you know, worry about too much. But, you know, sometimes we, we, we run into these structures that are not necessarily super important to us on a daily day basis that are kind of interesting. And uh, I think this is definitely one of them. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture on the bony orbit. And uh, I think it's time to move on to the next one. All right, let's go. Oh, just wait, just wait. Sometimes I make mistakes. And I thought instead of re-recording this entire video, which I thought went pretty well and I was happy with it, I just thought I would 
sneak this last slide in. I actually made the mistake of thinking my last slide was my optician new significance, and it wasn't. So I kind of talked about it like it was. But so obviously we have even more optician new significance than we thought we would. So I'm going to just breeze through this because we already went a little long on the last one, and I talked about a lot of this stuff already. So let's just look at it. I want you to remember that it's only it's more than one bone. Reason I'm you know hanging on to this one, and I want you to know is because there is sometimes where people. Um, can get hit in the face really hard, you know, with a baseball or boxers or someone who's been into a fight, unfortunately. Um, they can get something called a blowout fracture. And that's where the maxilla, you notice at the bottom bone, and sometimes even other bones like the palatine bone, they can get shattered and the eyes contents or the sockets contents all fall through the floor. So that's why it's called a blowout fracture. And everything, it looks like the eye got sunken in. Um, if, you, if you're not squeamish, look up blowout fracture on the internet and you're going to see what I'm talking about. So, and that kind of like reiterates it to you that it's not just one bone. Um, and actually that can be repaired, uh, you know, a, um, you know, in conjunction with plastic surgeons and ophthalmologists, these kind of things can be fixed. Um, and so I, I just always like to mention things that you might run into and I don't want you to feel like, hey, we never talked about that in the course. So that's kind of related to it being more than one bone. Um, Remember that the bony orbit there is there for for protection, right? So that's the main reason why the eyes. That's why the eyes are on the outside, right? Uh, if it was, if we weren't concerned about having these structures, con, you know, um, protected, it would be some kind of outward protrusion of our on our face or wherever. However, it's it's there. The bones are there to protect the eye. Um, and the most important thing that I didn't mention is that it serves as a muscle attachment site for the extraocular muscles. Um, that's why I brought this slide back because we, we didn't talk about that. That you know We're gonna talk in very shortly about the extraocular muscles and where do they attach? Uh, well, it's to the bony orbit. And that's actually one of the main functions of the bony orbit is to serve as an attachment site, right? So yes, so now we are really done. Um, my apologies, I hope it, uh, you caught this last one. Um, and now I promise we are moving on to the next one. So let's go.